All this time, though, I've been running businesses. So none of this has stopped me from running, running my, my first business. I was 21 and set up with my second husband, or we turned out to be my second husband. And, and we, were, uh, we were the first specialist installation company in the UK for kitchens. So this was in the late 70s, and we had uh, a variety of different clients. Um, I could be dealing with Lord and Lady Trough, um, who were Harrods clients one day, and then an the East End gangster the next day. Um, so lots of fun and adventure, lots of scary moments, but certainly a real good grounding and understanding and dealing with different kinds of people. So um, we grew very, very quickly. Um, we grew to 2 million turnover, which, you know, on today's money, that's, that's a lot. I don't know what that's equivalent in today's money. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, we lose a lot of money. So the lifestyle was, was ridiculous. I was in early 20s, um, and I thought all business people gambled, drunk, uh, Monte Carlo, casinos, sports cars, you know, living a high life, all the rest of it. I thought, you know, I didn't come from a business family, but that's the way my husband was, well, still is um, uh, 10 years older than me, so um, I looked up to him, but I don't know why, because he wasn't a business person either, my was but anyway, we, we made it all up as we went along, and um, then in 1986, the bank manager said to us, um, oh, Mr. Smith, I thought I was really clever, because I negotiated a, a, a deal, um, for three quarters of a million pounds, and we were not just installing kitchens. So by this time, we'd had um, I was managing contracts and um, up to ten fits every week. And in those days, you didn't have more tradespeople; you had carpenters and electricians and, and um, plumbers and tilers. And so I was coordinating all these installation fits. And um, years later, I was told that that's project management, but I just kind of made it up. Mm -hmm. Common sense. Uh, common sense management is how I. Um, so then um, we also progressed, we, we then went to four, um, one showroom in the open, then another sh kitchen showroom. Um, um, we were doing all Harrods fits, Harrods was selling the kitchens, and then we were doing all the, the, the uh, I was doing project management and then installing them with the guys. Um, we had, we went up to four showrooms, we also had a manufacturing uh, outfit, we made their own kitchens as well as other people's kitchens. Then we, um, what did we do? We had a concession in Devon's and Oxford Street in London. So we were, we were quite, quite good in those days, and um, we were the leaders. So, but what we didn't do, we didn't keep our eyes open on the market, what was happening around us. Um, it was coming up to uh, a dodgy, dodgy period because the, um, what we call the sheds came into operation, so flat pack kitchens. We were top end, high, high end luxury. People were spending 25,000, 30,000 pounds on the kitchen in those days. Um, so then the market changed, so we, we didn't keep our eyes open on what was happening in the market trends. Um, we didn't have any financial systems, processes. We just had money coming in, we spent it, money came in, we spent more, and so forth and so forth. So working on a master's degree, and some people who have got three degrees because they their third degree. I didn't know how to write a report or the words they use. So I'd go home every weekend with this you know, list of all these words, and I've got these words up and so on. Um, but it took me a huge amount, and I graduated when I was, was 40 with an MBA in legal practice, and that's one of the best things I've ever done. So, um, the, um, what happened then? I said to the law firm that I was working with at the time, it would only take me 18 months to sort their debt problem. So, it would have taken for, uh, 18 months to sort their problem now and the and staff and so on and so forth. Um, so, um, that's why I embarked on the MBA, because I was getting bored with the role. So the firm sponsored me through, through the programme. There was no agreements, no nothing in writing. It was just literally a handshake, which again wouldn't have today. But this was in '95. Um, yeah, I started '95, finished in '97. So um, then, at the end of it, I was made redundant, and um, I thought, what am I going to do? So I set up a business consultancy, and one of the guys on the call said, "Don't bother doing that. Come and be my chief exec." So I did that and um, stupidly sold the house, moved the family out with another. So uh, that was a very difficult time. Most of the day had to break down. Um, son came back from nursery with the F word. So it was, it was a, a challenging time. Um, and I didn't know then that I had a son with Asperger's syndrome. Um, so that's been another, another challenge. Um, so um, we came back to London, had nowhere to live, no money, no job, no nothing. Um, and then I got approached to become um, Chief Operating Officer at Ernst & Young, and I ran one of their consulting divisions in London for a year. Uh, I had 220 staff all over the country. Uh, that was a very interesting period. Um, 
and one of the reasons I was hired because of my previous business experience and also because of my, my MBA. The, the CEO wanted to show off that she got somebody with an MBA, so great for my company. Um, but after a year, I couldn't stomach it any longer. The corporate nonsense would do me just too much. So I came away, and the organisation itself is, is a really, really good organisation, but the bit I was in was, was a, almost like a maverick part of it, it was a consultancy division. Um, so I then, um, uh, what did I do then? I came away and started doing business consulting again. Um, but I wanted to do something a bit different, so I got trained in behavior profiling, and over the years I've become an expert um, asking you to take a look at profiling. I use the DISC model of behavior profiling, but what I've done, I link it to health, because so many business owners don't consider their health. If you haven't got your health, you haven't got business, mm -hmm. and that's it. And if the health of your, you, the top team and all the employees, particularly the top team, if the health isn't tip top, that's going to have an upper effect on the bottom line of business. So I link behaviour and health very, very strongly. Um, and the particular model that I use shows me how much stress somebody is under in the workplace. So I can go through you as a person and she also go through you as a business, and go through your business and get one in scope and integrity and transparency and all that sort of stuff. That's it, really. I could talk for days, so I <laughs> <laughs>